you know the drill at this point. 3D Sonic. These games basically never get high review scores, lukewarm at best, which is in stark contrast to Sonic's contemporaries, hell, even Sonic's own 2D output. The first question you may have is, well, why should I give a sh about dumb critical reception in the first place? My favorite game of all time is Sonic Unleashed, so that should tell you, I know, I know this number is not fact, but you know who does care? The publisher the executives, the developers, the accolades, trailer, and even though they may deny this, the people do care. The people are affected by reviews. Admittedly, franchises that are too big to fall aren't really affected by this. Marketing and brand loyalty does wonders. It's just, Sonic is not too big to fall. Sonic has fallen. We saw it happen, we saw the effects. However, 2024 is a very different time for Sonic than, say, 2014. So much is happening, but I just have one thing I've been wondering. How will Sonic X Shadow Generations do in the reviews? To figure that out, let's take a stroll through memory lane. Also, I feel like I should mention this for anyone who's unaware. Metacritic is not one guy in a room reviewing things, it is an aggregate. That means they take all scored reviews and produce a number based on all of those. They also apply weight to the more trusted and valuable outlets, whatever that means. Let's get this out of the way first. Sonic Adventure 2 on Dreamcast. 89. The second highest rated Sonic game on the site. Highest rated 3D game. Number one is actually Sonic CD for iOS. This game was beloved universally in 2001. It's still beloved, still great, but it wouldn't score this today. It is kind of an anomaly, especially if you look at re-releases. So here's my two major reasons Sonic Adventure 2 scored so high. Number one, you have to place yourself in what June 2001 held for gaming. No other platformer was quite as detailed as this game was at the time of its release. It was additionally half a year before the release of the GameCube or the Xbox. People had never seen a game like Sonic Adventure 2. It was the Dreamcast's swan song. That absolutely will have swayed people into being more positive for the game. Certainly if you look at reviews of the time, swept up in the fields. It's the last exclusive Sonic game. The Dreamcast is done. And I do think any reviewer who beats the game and sees that credit scene in 2001 is gonna be emotional. The franchise was not really tainted at this point. Games media people weren't afraid to love Sonic the Hedgehog. We don't have scores on MC for the first Sonic Adventure, but we did have game rankings and judging by this screenshot, it got really good scores. GameSpot gave it a 9.2. These games got 8s, 9s and 10s, which is crazy to look back on. However, it just gets lower and lower after that, honestly. I made this a few years ago in 2021. I don't think it looks very nice nowadays, but it is pretty comprehensive and useful. Sonic Heroes did pretty decent. Still mixed, but pretty decent. Shadow the Hedgehog, 45 to 51. Now I'm gonna put myself out there and say Shadow wasn't actually this bad. Nerds in 2005 really could not accept that he had guns. Again, time capsule. Sonic 06. Self-explanatory. Secret Rings score interests me. I want to say this was a case of motion control hype. Unleashed, of course, insane, absolutely insane numbers. Not far off from Sonic 06, which is bullshit. Werehawk plus Sonic hatred in this era contributed to that, but what gets to me in this is that the inferior versions somehow reviewed higher. That's how you know they were on some shit of the bull variety. Sonic and the Black Knight came out when We Waggle Love was at an all-time low. The novelty of motion control had worn off and 2009 nerds were furious he had a sword. So this makes perfect sense. Ironic because, again, it's much better than Secret Rings. The 2000s 3D platformers are a consistent string of yellows and only one game does put an end to that. Go! Sonic Colors. 78. You'd think this game would have scored higher with how people talk about it. Then and now savior of the series and all that. That brings us to Generations, which is seen as one of the best Sonic games. And it's one point lower than Sonic Colors. Raise your hands if you think Sonic Generations is worse than Sonic Colors. Put your hand down, you filthy liar. Following those, you have the rest. It was quite the downward slope. So this period in particular was kind of harsh. There was a lot of bias against the guy, particularly his 3D ventures. There's no good reason Sonic 4 should be higher than almost every 3D Sonic game that was released, but it is. Sonic Unleashed is equal, if not worse, than Forces and the Lost World. Does anyone watching this think Sonic Unleashed is on the same level as those games? Probably not. It's ridiculous. But what I'm trying to say is I do feel that stigma has 
largely dissipated. The divide is still somewhat present. It will never truly go away, whether we're talking about critics or fans, but I think the appeal of the modern Sonic franchise is a little more apparent nowadays. Meaning Sonic Generation's original score, Rough 77, would absolutely be higher if it was released today. Alongside Mania, this is the quintessential Sonic game. You recommend this to anyone who wants to get into the series. And yeah, Gens has its issues, sure, but nothing tears the experience down. You get 3D levels that have some of the most fun and replayable level design this series has ever seen. You get 2D Classic Sonic that specifically tries to emulate those older games for those of us who are weak and can't handle speed. The best of both worlds are on display here. On top of that, you get a ton of fan service, you get an inoffensive story, you get substantial substantial extra content, you get a quality soundtrack, you get a fantastic game that just balances everything so fluently. There is very little to actually hate in Generations. Unfortunately, it was unlucky enough to be released in 2011. Critics were not ready for this back then, but then 13 years later, Sega takes all of that, enhances it for modern platforms, and then they dramatically up the value with something crazy, something bonkers, giving you two games for less than one. This really could be one of the best Sonic games ever, if it's as good as it looks. Because up until now, I feel like every Sonic game in the past five years has had something leading up to release, some kind of crappiness. Sonic Colors Ultimate looked like crap. Sonic Origins decided to produce the funniest child of all time for a re-release of games that were mostly playable already. Not exciting. Sonic Frontiers, just a rough pre-release. Positive impressions, negative impressions, ominous predictions. People very much thought it was gonna be bad. Jokes on them, it's a 7 out of 10. Hell yeah. A 70 will kill most gaming franchises. For Sonic, this was the moment everything changed. Sonic Superstars, which was weird. Frontiers had this air of excitement around it, even with the rough edges. That same spark wasn't quite there with Superstars, and it was reflected in pre-release impressions. Also, this joke was almost as funny as the Origins chart. Dream Team, I'm not going to dignify that with the response. It's all been leading up to the most promising Sonic game since Mania. I just haven't seen much, if any, negativity surrounding this game, specifically in regards to the new content. All the gaming outlets that have been talking about the game have been generally super positive. There's no red flag to be seen here. That's terrifying. It could actually be great. Not just good. Now, production quality is really important to critics. I've noticed it is one of those few things you can be objective about. And well, we already know one half is quality. So what's freaking me out is that Shadow's portion of the game somehow looks to be dripping it even more polished than the base game. All things considered, I have concluded through research, through my findings, that this remaster will absolutely reach an 84 on Metacritic. Tops 86, minimum 81. Don't underestimate the vibe check, people. I know everything about vibes. However, it's important to keep in mind that this can still go very wrong. It's not too late for a good old disaster. Perhaps they've added a cool new seizure glitch being a success with the movie coming out quite soon. Maybe I'm wrong and it just barely scrapes sevens and eights. Even that would be an improvement. But no, I really do believe this is going to be the title that at long last breaks into that 80s range on Metacritic or on OpenCritic. The game that forces people to turn around and say, oh damn, Sonic actually is back. 3D Sonic deserves love. They don't deserve to be thrown around in the dirt. Very few games satisfy my itch for speed in the way Sonic does. Everything has lined up. Let's just see if Sega finally delivers.